Hey guys, welcome to the SLQ series. In this video, we're going to focus on question on heat capacity. So stay tuned. When they ask questions on heat capacity, it's very common for them to ask questions on the final temperature of a substance when two substances are mixed. So let's look at an example here. A glass contains 250 grams of water with initial temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. The water is added to a metal mug with mass 200 grams and initial temperature 15 degrees Celsius. What is the final water temperature? So here they've given you specific heat capacity of water, 4200 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Very important to take note of the unit. Specific heat capacity of the mug is 500 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. Now, as with all questions, the first thing we want to do is list out all the information that's given to us. So first thing we see is the mass of water. So mass of water is 250 grams. Initial temperature of water, Ti water is 30 degrees Celsius. Mug is 200 grams. Initial temperature of mug is 15 degrees Celsius. Specific heat capacity is given to us. And the question is, what is the final temperature? So Tf, what is Tf? Now the concept here is that when we put two objects with different temperatures together, there is going to be heat flow. So if you want to know the theory for this, the video link is in the corner. So when there is a heat flow, there is a net heat flow in initially until there comes a point where there is no net heat flow. And this is when thermal equilibrium is reached and this is when we assume we are taking the temperature. So the concept here is heat flow. Heat flows there is a net heat flow, overall heat flow from the hot object to the cold object. Remember, this is only the net flow. So for this case, the water is at a higher temperature than the mug. So heat flows from water to the mug. So that's the concept that we're going to start with. So there will be a flow from water to the mug until thermal equilibrium is reached. When thermal equilibrium is reached, both will reach the same temperature. This is another important concept here. So to understand thermal equilibrium more, please see the video in the link. So when they reach the final temperature, they have the same final temperature. So the heat lost by the water, the water is losing heat because it has a higher temperature, is equals to the heat gained by the mug. Okay, of course there are some assumptions here, I'll go through later. But this is the concept here. So heat equals heat. Heat loss equals heat gain. And this formula for heat is Q is mc delta theta. This is our formula for heat energy. So this is what we're going to use here. Since this is heat lost by water, so this mc delta theta will be the heat all related to the water. So mass of water, specific heat capacity of water, and change in temperature of the water. And then we have heat gained by mug. So this, all these physical quantities here all will be related to the mug mass of mug, specific heat capacity of mug, and change in temperature of mug. So we already written all our values earlier, you know, we can easily substitute inside. So mass here, now this is where the units play an important role. You see the units for specific heat capacity is joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. If it's joules per kilogram, then the unit of mass here must be in kilograms. So from 250 grams is 0 0.25 kilograms. And then we put in the specific heat capacity and change in temperature 0 0.2 because 200 grams and 500 for specific heat capacity of the mug. Now how do we do change in temperature then? So the change in temperature here, we have already defined that it, this is heat lost. When we define it as heat loss here, we are only looking at the magnitude of heat. So there is no need to put final temperature minus initial temperature. Heat change is always final minus initial. And if it is a heat loss, the heat change will be negative. But in this case, we have already defined as heat loss is equals to heat gain. So we are only talking about the magnitude of heat, the magnitude of heat energy. That is why in this case, we don't do final minus initial because the magnitude will be positive for both. The magnitude, if we lose 5 joules of heat, and then another one will gain 5 joules of heat. So this is with magnitude. So here the change in temperature of water, in order to get positive, here the temperature is going to go down because there was a net heat flow from water to the mug before thermal equilibrium. So this temperature is going to drop, that means 30 is the higher temperature. So the change in temperature will be 30 minus theta. 
30 minus the final temperature. And for here, for the mark, the temperature is going to increase because initially it was at a lower temperature. So the temperature change here will be, since the temperature is going to increase, the final temperature will be greater than the initial temperature. So it is Tf minus 15. This is the change in temperature of the mark. Again, here we don't take into account any negative because of the way we have set up the equation. So when we work it out, we get this. And then when we work it out further, we will get 1150 temperature equals 33,000. And we get the final temperature to be 28.7 degrees Celsius. Here the temperature has to be in degrees Celsius. Not because of this, not because of specific heat capacity. Remember, if you want to know more about the theory of the units of heat capacity, the video link is at the corner. But remember here, it can be per degree Celsius or per Kelvin. It doesn't matter. It's exactly the same thing. However, this has to be in degrees Celsius because of our initial temperatures. The initial temperatures, we are using degrees Celsius. So this temperature will be in degrees Celsius as well. It cannot be in Kelvins. So when doing this question, there are two main assumptions that we have made. The first one is that no heat is lost to the surrounding. That means we assume that all the heat from the water was transferred to the muck. None of it was lost to the environment. None of it was transferred to the air around the water. This is of course an ideal situation. In reality, there's no such thing. Some heat will be lost to the surrounding. So the change in temperature will actually be less. The second assumption is the water and the muck are in thermal equilibrium when we measure the final temperature. So we assume that they've already reached thermal equilibrium. Otherwise, we cannot use this concept. Otherwise, this concept will be wrong. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please do support me by hitting the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. I will be posting one video a week. And I'll see you in the next video.